All right, this is going to be part three of the shell method. And if you haven't done it yet, I would definitely watch the first two because they will show where these equations come from and, and you'll get to see what the first example looked like. Now, in the first example, we just did one function going around the axis. In this example, we'll have two functions going around uh, both the x and the y axis. Uh, now, just a reminder to start with uh, from the first two videos, uh, if you take it around the x-axis, put everything in terms of y. If you take it around the y-axis or the vertical axis, then put everything in terms of x. So we'll be working with these two formulas right here. Now, in the first example, we're going to take two functions around the y-axis, so we'll use this lower equation here and put everything in terms of x. So let's take a look at it and see what it looks like. Okay, to start with, suppose we had something that looks like this. You use the shell method to find the volume of revolution of the solid generated by the region bordered by, and you've got two equations here, so two functions. So y is equal to x, that's this straight line that's on top, and y is equal to x squared, that's the bottom curve right here, so it's just a parabola. Now, they will intersect up here at the point 1, 1, and the figure looks like this. So what this is, this defines the area that you're going to revolve around the axis. Now, if you rotate it around the axis, it would look like this. So if you take it around the axis, it will sweep out a volume that looks like this shaded part right here. And we want to find that volume using the shell method. So let's go ahead and put the formula up here to start with. Now again, we're taking it around the y-axis, so we'll put everything in terms of x. So the formula is going to look something like this. Now, just like in the previous problems, all these shell problems come down to this. It wants to know what is the radius and what is the height. If you can find the radius and the height, you're pretty well done with the problem. Now the first step is to draw yourself one shell inside this figure. Now you have to draw the shell because it's only by looking at the picture in the shell that you can find out what these two things are. So to start with, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to draw one uh, vertical rectangle which will represent the edge of the shell and just somewhere inside this figure between these two lines. So it will look something like this. So I'll come down to here, uh, go across like this, go up like this, and I'll let that be a single rectangle. Now I kind of shade that a little bit just so it sort of stands out. So what this is, this is one edge of the shell. Again, it doesn't have to be a great drawing, but we'll go ahead and complete a shell. So I'll revolve, if I took this rectangle and revolved it around the axis, it would sweep out something that looks kind of like this. So we'll go to here, back around like this. And then on this side over here, I'll have another uh, edge of the shell. So I'll put that in, and it's going to look like this right here. So it'll come down something like this, across to here. Uh, and goes back up like this. So this would also be one edge of the shell. And again, the bottom, if I completed the curve, would look something like this. So again, it doesn't have to be a great work of art, but just get yourself a shell in there. So this would actually have sort of like a little outer one if you wanted to, uh, where it looks something like that. So there's one shell. Now, the things I need to know, I need to know what are the radius and what is the height? And that's the, basically, that's the whole problem. So what will happen is this. If I go from here to here, the radius is just the distance from the axis that you're rotating around to the edge of the shell. So the radius would be this distance right here. So I need to know what is r. Now what the height of the shell is, that's this distance from here to here. So that's going to be the height. So I need the radius and the height. Just go ahead and find those. And the only way to find them is actually just look at your picture. Now in this case, the radius is easy. The radius is just the x distance because it's parallel to the x-axis. So in this case, the radius of that shell is whatever r or x is equal to. So the radius would be equal to x. So you've got x, so that part was pretty easy. Now to get the height, when you've got two functions, let's kind of draw a picture of it to start with. What the height of this thing is going to be it's going to be the distance to the bottom of it, which would be from here, say, to right here. We'll call that uh, y1. And then you've got this distance that goes from here up to here. And we'll call that y2. So what the height of the shell is going to be, it's going to be the difference in those two lengths. So the height of the shell would be y2 minus y1. 
So if you want to, you can kind of come over here and put it's going to be y2 minus y1. But you've got a problem immediately, and that's this. Everything has to be in terms of x. So it's true that it's y2 minus y1, but you've got to put the whole thing in terms of x. So to put that in terms of x, what you'd have is this. This one's going to still be x, and then you're going to have this. Now what y2 is, y2 is the height up to this straight line. And that straight line is y is equal to x. So this is going to be y2, and y2 would just be x, so you can put an x in right there, so replace with what it's equal to. And you've got minus. Now, this height here, y1, that's the height of that curve line. So this would be y1, and y1 is equal to x squared. So put an x squared in here. And really, the hard part of the problem is done. You've now changed it. Uh, you've got the radius, you've got the height, and you've got it in terms of x. And the only way to get it again is off your picture. So if you draw the picture, you can get both these things off that. Now, from here on out, it's just a matter of running through the calculus on the integral. So let's just go ahead and do that quickly here. So the volume is going to be equal to 2 pi times the integral from. Now, the thickness of this thing will be this little piece right here. That's going to be dx. So dx is the thickness of the edge of the shell. So that goes, you're going to integrate it from here to here. So this is going to be equal to a, and this is going to be b over here. So you're going to integrate it from 0 to 1. The radius is x, and the height is x minus x squared. So put the whole thing in terms of x, and now it's just a matter of solving that. So let's kind of run through that and see what we come up with. Um, so what this is going to be would be uh, 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 1. And go ahead and distribute this to x. So x squared minus x cubed dx. So that would be 2 pi. And let's find the antiderivative of these. So that's going to be x cubed divided by 3 minus x to the fourth divided by 4, evaluated from 0 to 1. All right, so what that would be would be 2 pi, and go ahead and plug in the 1, so you'll have 1 cubed divided by 3 minus 1 to the fourth divided by 4. When you plug in the 0, it'll just go to 0, so you don't have to worry about those. So again, what this would be would be 2 pi times 1 third minus 1 fourth. And again, if you put those over a common denominator, then you would have 2 pi. And this one will become 4 twelfths. And this one will become 3 twelfths. So get them all over a common denominator. So multiply this one by 4 over 4, multiply this one by 3 over 3. And what that's going to give you would be 2 pi times uh, 4 minus 3 would be 1 twelfth. Or finally, it'll turn into pi divided by 6. And what this is, this is going to be the volume if you rotated. Uh, that around the y-axis. And if you change that into a decimal, it would be about 0.52, and again, cubic whatever, I suppose we're working in inches. It might be something like cubic inches. So what that is, that's a sample of how to do one going around the, uh, the y-axis. So let's kind of move it up here again and take another quick look at it. Um, and again, if you're going to take it around the y-axis, put everything in terms of x. So you had to look at your figure and get y2 and y1 and the radius uh, off the figure itself. But it's important to draw the shell because otherwise you won't know uh, how to change these two things into functions of y or x. Okay, now what that is, that's one going around the y-axis. Let's look at exactly the same problem, but this time going around the x-axis. So it'll look like this. Uh, we'll start with exactly the same function, but this time we'll roll it around the x-axis, and when we do that, it will turn into something that looks like this. 
Okay, let's go back to the formulas again, the very first formulas. <clears throat> uh, since we're going to go around the x-axis, put everything in terms of y. So last time it was all everything dx, this time it'll all be dy with everything in terms of y. So we're going to use this top formula. Okay, now if you do that, here's what it's going to look like. The formula would be it's still just going to be the radius of the height. And exactly like last time, your whole problem is what is the radius and what is the height. And again, you'll do it by first of all finding the... Uh, put everything in terms of this and finding in terms of a shell. So the very first step is draw the shell. Now last time we started with a vertical rectangle. This time since it's going to go around the x-axis I'm going to start with a horizontal rectangle. So I just come in here somewhere and draw one horizontal rectangle that will represent the edge of the shell. So it looks something like this. If I go from here across to here and then down uh, like this and looks like this. So what this is going to be, this is going to be one edge of the shell right here. Now again, I'll go ahead and complete the revolution on this thing. And again, it doesn't have to be great, just something to give you an idea of what you can work with on it. So what I'm going to do is go from here uh, down like this and we'll go kind of around here. So it goes to here and then back up something along this line. So if I rolled it around the axis, it would look something like this. Uh, and again, I'm going to go from here down like this. And again, not a great work of art, but just as long as I get it in there. So something like this. Now I'll have the other part of the rectangle will be down here, and it looks like this. Now the whole reason for drawing this shell is that you can find the radius and the height. So once you've got a picture, so there's a single shell. Now again, what I need is the radius and the height, and the first thing I would suggest you do is come in here and just mark what these two things are. So the radius is the distance from the axis that you're rotating it around to the edge of the shell. So that distance right there is the radius. Now this right here would be the height. So you've got to find the radius and you've got to find the height. Now in this problem, the radius is just whatever the y height is. So the, since the radius is parallel to the y-axis, the radius is just going to be equal to y. So what you'll have here will be the radius will be y. Now let's look at the height. What the height is going to be, it's kind of like that last problem. It's going to be this distance in between here and here. And what that's going to be will be this distance, which I'm going to call x1. And then if you went up to here, this distance right here would be uh, x2. And what that is, that's the distance to this edge of the shell. So if you take this x minus this x, then you would have this length right in here. So this length right in here would be x2 minus x1, and you'll have the height. So what you've got to find is it's going to be x2 minus x1. But again, you've got a problem. Right now, everything you need everything in terms of y, and these are x's. So you've got to change both these two x's into y's. So to do that, look at your picture. Uh, x1 is the distance to the straight line, which is this one right here. So this would be x1. And what that gives you is just x1 is equal to y1. So there is, uh, you can change x in terms of y. Now what this is, this is the distance to this curve line. So that's going to be, this will be x2, and this would be y2. Uh, so on this one, you've actually got to solve it. Now, if y is equal to x squared, take the square root of both sides, and you would have this. So you'll have the square root of y is equal to x, and this is actually going to be x sub 2. Now, that would be like having y to the 1 half power is equal to this one. So uh, here is the first one, x, and then here would be your second x. So change both of the x's in terms of y. So what that's going to give you is this. Um, y, x2 is equal to y to the 1 half power minus x1 is just equal to y. And then the radius is y. So again, the hard part of the problem is done. You've found that. Um, 
Uh, you've got the whole thing in terms of y. Now it's just a matter of going through the integral. So your picture will let you know how to find this. So the radius is y, the height is x2 minus x1, but you've got to put them both in terms of y. So change that one into a y and change that one into a y. Now find the integral. So let's go through that. So the volume would be um, the integral of 2 pi. Now again, since this little thickness right here, this is differential y. That's the thickness of the thing. So you're going to integrate this from here down to here. So you're going to integrate it with respect to y. So it's going to go from y equals 0 to y equals 1. This would be a and this would be b in the formula. So this is going to go from 0 to 1 of y times y to the 1 half minus y, and the whole thing will be dy. Now the first step, just like all the other problems, is just an integral from here, is go ahead and distribute this y. So that's going to give you 2 pi uh, times the integral from 0 to 1 of y to the 3 halves um, minus y squared dy. Okay, so the antiderivative of this would be uh, 2 pi, and then the antiderivative would be y to the 5 halves divided by 5 halves minus y cubed divided by 3. And it will be evaluated between 0 and 1. Okay, next thing I would do is go ahead and, and Take the 5 halves, turn it upside down. That's going to give you 2 pi times 2 fifths of y to the 5 halves minus y cubed divided by 3 evaluated from 0 to 1. So plug in the numbers and you will have 2 fifths of 1 to the 5 halves minus 1 cubed divided by 3. And in the, when you plug in the 0, everything will go to 0, so we'll just leave that one out. So that's going to get you to this. 2 pi times 2 fifths, and this will just turn into a 1, uh, minus 1 third. Okay, now get those over a common denominator, and you would have the following. Uh, multiply this one by... 3 over 3, multiply this one by 5 over 5, and you'll have 6 over 15 minus 5 over 15, which would give you 2 pi times 1 over 15. So the final answer would be uh, 2 pi over 15. And that's going to be the volume that you would get rolling that thing around the x-axis. Now, if you stuck on a calculator and changed it, you would get an answer of about 0.42. And again, it might be, if it was all in terms of inches, it might be something like cubic inches. Uh, but let's back up and take a quick one final look at it up here. So again, if you're going to go around... Uh, the x-axis put everything in terms of y. Draw your picture, and you might come up with some things in terms of x first. Like in this case, uh, uh, my height was actually in terms of x, so it was this distance minus this distance. But you've got to change them using this and this. Change them in terms of y. Put the whole thing in terms of y. Once you've got it in terms of y, find the integral, and you're done. So there's a couple of uh, examples with two functions going around the x and y axis.